I've seen the article that Frost and Sullivan have put out, and uh, I thought it was rather poetic, the line you came up with. He said that uh, the branding teams are no doubt facing up to the challenge that the spectre of customer uncertainty could come to haunt them. Uh, how do you think this might happen with Barty? Well, if we look at the brand that uh, Barty is uh, inheriting, especially in those markets where the brand has performed poorly, uh, it has become synonymous with poor service, uh, call it last to market with um, services, uh, not really being able to meet customer expectations. So at the moment, with the new owners coming in, existing and potential subscribers for uh, Zane or we'll say for Barty are looking to see what other value can the new owners bring? How can Zane uh, improve itself in terms of being more competitive in those markets? So those expectations are definitely going to be uh, awaiting uh, the Barty marketing team. I suppose, sorry, Sipiwe, it's uh, Kirby Lakranji here from, uh, from Axis. I suppose in the forefront of, of, of your mind must be how much it costs to, uh, to launch a new brand and what that, what, what that cost would be associated with that. Um, any idea what, what those numbers would look like? Well, I would not be able to give um, an educated guess at this point, but if we look historically at how much the likes of MTN, even if we look at a slightly smaller operator in the African context like Vodacom, what they've spent, we're looking at tens of millions, if not more, in terms of just trying to brand or at least establish a brand presence. Spiwe, um, how does this uh, unveiling of this brand fit in to the bigger picture of what is a very competitive mobile market in Africa right now? Well, at the moment, uh, from what we've seen from the successful operators, uh, brand is everything. I mean, let's take MTN and let's look in a market like Nigeria. Uh, they have managed to you know, establish themselves as the operator that is synonymous with mobile communication. So anybody thinks mobile communications, they think MTN. And that has paid off because if we look at uh, the context of Nigeria, you will have, say, Globalcom's subscribers, which is the number three operator, still sitting on MTN sims, but that might not necessarily be the case when it comes to Zane. So you'll have people sitting with Globalcom and MTN, or Zane and MTN, or Mubadala and MTN, because of that strong brand visibility and strong brand awareness that they've been able to uh, set for themselves. So if it is a case of Zane or Barty looking to take advantage of um, call it the multiple SIM trend that we're seeing in the region, which is one of the key call it, sources of growth uh, across uh, the region. It will be very important that they position themselves as the viable alternative to any other operator within those markets. So, Pewe, I suppose, I mean, one of the things that come to mind is the fact that it's one can understand it from the Barty Airtel perspective that one would want to create this global. Uh, brand, um, so to speak, um, and potentially roll out Airtel uh, across most of your markets and potentially look back in a decade from now and have a, uh, a fantastic brand and, and an OR behind it. But one thing that one has to potentially take into consideration is the fact that how many governments are going to be behind um, the, the launch of the, the Airtel brand and, and, and the forfeiture of the Zane brand. Uh, predominantly where in certain cases governments have actually been quite vocal about the Zane brand and the fact that they quite like the fact that Zane brand was around. Well, at this point, I do believe that the government would probably be the list of their worries, I mean, relative to the actual consumers that they're trying to uh, market uh, the brand to. Yes, on the one hand, you've got Zane being... Um, synonymous with a lot of things in some cases where the public sector is concerned. But I guess Zayn could then actually leverage off those relationships to actually push their brand further to the mass market or the man on the street. So if the government is behind it, then that would actually garner extra support from uh, the mass as a whole. What do you think is the greatest difficulty facing Bharti now as it goes through this period of change? Yeah, the first thing, as I touched on briefly uh, earlier, is the competitive environment. Um, unfortunately, the days of uh, aggressive pricing and you know, aggressive customer acquisition are gone because uh, 
the competitive advantage that comes from that is quickly eroded. So uh, I believe that we have a few thinkers and a lot of followers. So as soon as one operator launches something within a week, two weeks, a month, all the other operators already have the same product or the same pricing or the same uh, value-added uh, service offering. So to try and differentiate themselves with the new brand, because we are expecting that with a new brand they will be looking to offer additional value to differentiate themselves from the current um, operators, that will be a big challenge. And if we look at the companies that they are up against, so we're looking at most of their markets, they are up against the MTNs, they are up against the Tigos, and all these companies have deep pockets to actually quickly and eff effectively replicate whatever advantage Barty is trying to build uh, within those markets. So there's, there is a need for a, a very unique, if I may put it that way, strategy in terms of differentiating themselves in the region. Speedway, I suppose another another question which comes to mind is: um, Is there a a consumer decision making process that consumers of mobile operations in Africa use that are different from Western markets, or is it price? Is really price the big signifier still up in Africa? Yes, price is uh, the biggest uh, differentiator, and based on. Yes call a high level assessment on what uh, some of the successful brands like the MTNs and the Tigos and all the other uh, large operators have been able to build it. It is actually their visibility outside of the mobile arena. So if we look at MTN, very active in the soccer sport area, lots of CSR work uh, with the company. So to extend that image beyond you know, being the person that just provides communication but actually provides additional call it socioeconomic value is one key uh, point that um, has allowed uh, operators to gain that additional popularity or acceptance uh, with the masses as a whole. But over and above that price still remains the key factor in the sense that those operators that tend to be priced slightly above or if, uh, significantly above all the other uh, operators do tend to lose out in terms of subscri uh, subscriber um, acquisition and to, to an extent subscriber rotation as well. Just one last brief question. I mean, uh, in, San San in Nigeria, there's quite a price war going on between mobile operators. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, we're going to see uh, more of that in Africa? Well, the price wars, if we look at a market like Tanzania and we look at what it's done to the likes of Vodacom, it is not sustainable. It is a short-term measure with very uh, risky repercussions or very dangerous repercussions because uh, operators will tend to get caught up in the price war at the cost of margins. So we believe that uh, price wars will go on, but only in the short term. And we are expecting that starting 2011, 2012, we will start to see less and less of uh, price wars um, in the markets. But if we look at Nigeria, it is a slightly unique case in the sense that they are still sitting on relatively high average revenue per user levels. So this is $15, $16, which is much higher than what you see in markets like Tanzania that are down to $5, $4. So there is still room for um, <clears throat> Excuse me. There is still room for uh, price wars, but if we look at the likes of MTN, and given that Nigeria is a big contributor to the group's performance, it is very risky because any slight or noteworthy declines in Nigeria will affect the whole group as a whole. So they need to trade very carefully.